What is up everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to keep going with our Chart.js implementation on our blogging application. We left off in the last episode um, with a couple of things going on. First of all, we have gaps in our dates here. So we have 717 and then 719. Um, and you can see that the range is 5 to 6 where there should be zeros on all of the other days where there were no page views. Also, I think I'm having an issue with time zones. So if I refresh here, um, you can see that now I've got 724, which I guess was actually last night was when that was registered. So I think that may just be a time zone thing because I have not refreshed this page today, um, but I did last night. And I think if I go refresh it now, um, so it should have a few more views now, and it's still eight. So I'm gonna see if I can fix the time zone, and we're gonna fix this zeros issue. So let's start with the time zone because I think that might be the easiest. So as a quick stab at trying to fix this, let's open up the uh, a new tab and just search for Rails time zone, and go to the active support here, and in application.rb it's telling us to set it like this. So let's copy that, and then let's go over to our code and open up application.rb. And then just inside of here, I'm gonna paste this and I'm actually in central time. So let's save that and then we'll need to restart our server over here. So I'll do that. And I'm gonna hope that this resolves it on its own. I don't know everything there is to know about time zones and rails. I just know that it has always been slightly obnoxious just because time zones in general are obnoxious, not because they're obnoxious in Rails necessarily. Um, okay, so that looks like that did solve the issue. So you can see here that I, it looks like I refreshed that three times. Um, so now it's saying 725. That's actually kind of funny. Um, so it's saying 725, it's got three, um, but in actual fact, huh. So it seems like it's th it's it's in UTC time basically when it's saved. Um, let me think about this for a second. So after some digging, it looks like what I need to do is come over here into my application.rb and paste this, which I found on Stack Overflow, obviously. Um, and then I think what this is actually doing is it's setting all of the, the data flowing through. Well, let's just look. I'm not going to go into some deep explanation here because honestly, I don't fully understand exactly what's going on here. And I don't want to make this a time zone episode unless I've had the chance to really work on it. I just want it to look right. So if you look here. Um, you can see now that we're uh, centered on, or we're ending on the 24th, which is the current day where I am. Before it was in UTC time, which is actually going to be the 25th, which is tomorrow. Um, now if I refresh here a couple of times, a few times, and I come back and refresh, it's saying 12. So what's interesting about that is I think the way the data saved before, it was actually saving it or like marking it as the 25th, um, but now it's on the 24th. So let's go look at the terminal really quick. And I wanna look at where we've done these inserts here. So if you look at this insert into impression, so these are from the last page refreshes that I did. You're getting these created at 724. Let's go up until we see green again. I uh, created that 724. I did three page refreshes, so we should have at least three of these 724s. Now, if we keep going up, it probably, yeah, so I restarted the server here. So before we restarted the server, the last one that we did, if I can keep going and going and going, um, uh, maybe that's not it. Where are we? Saw this just a second ago. Sorry for all of the big blur of text here. Yeah, so you see this insert into impression. So this is before we made the change. So we have the 725 
and then updated at 725 over there. So essentially, I think without this line of code, or with these two, without these two together, it's basically saving everything in the database in uh, UTC. So now it's saving it in my time zone, which is nice and it makes my stats look right. Now one thing you will have to be aware of is I think if you have data that's coming in in UTC before you make that change, if you already had this running in production, you would actually have to migrate that data to reflect that change. Otherwise, you're going to have stuff that's misaligned. Like I said, though, um, I haven't dealt with time zones a ton. I have did it on a couple of projects, but it was a long time ago, so I'd have to refresh my memory to get too deep into it. Um, so anyway, if you're doing any serious time zone work or if you have some expertise on this and would like to share in the comments, please feel free. Uh, if you have any good resources, definitely feel free. Maybe I'll do some digging myself and do a more in-depth thing on time zones in the future. That's really not what this is about. I just noticed that there was a problem and wanted to go ahead and get it at least looking right while we're using it. And to my eye, it looks right at the moment. So let's just kind of leave that for now and let's fix the issue with the zeros. Okay, so to fix that, um, I want to go back over to our page view class. And something that I had said before um, was I didn't really feel like these were actually scopes. They should be more like class methods. And the reason for that is they don't return something that's chainable. Um, so normally if you have scopes, like we can call for type and for range and chain these things together, but we can't do that here. And so what I'm going to do is turn this into a class method. And that's actually good like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Def self dot like that. And what I want to do is basically, well, first of all, what I want to do is pass in the start date and end date. And this is going to look a little bit strange for just a minute. Um, but we're going to pass that in like that. And then what I'm going to do is call for date range. And then we'll do start date and end date here. And we'll do the same on the bottom one. Uh, let's see here. How do I do that? Like that. So, and then I want to, I guess I just want to kind of split this up like that. It's kind of typically how you would see that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do inside of here is say results equal that. And this is all going to come together shortly. So now this is kind of uh, taking the API here has changed. So now we need to do this. And we can do the same here. So we'll just get the unique count by date. Pass that in like that. So let's go refresh just really quick to make sure we didn't break anything. So it looks the same. So cool. Okay, now let's go back. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a new method. And it's going to be called with zeros. And it's going to take in a date range. And let's call it a results hash like this. And what I want to do is say date range dot each do well first of all let's let's write a new hash here called hash with zeros. And then I'm gonna say date range dot each do date like that. And then I want to say um, hash with zeros date equals um, results hash date or zero. So basically, if there is no uh, value for that given date, we want to add the zero. And then we'll say hash with zeros. Fair enough. OK, so what I want to do is in each of these cases, um, and I guess we could just use the start date and the end date the same way we did there, right? So we, instead of just taking a date range, we could do start date and end date like that. 
Um, let me think about this a little bit. So we're passing in, we're actually passing in a timestamp for the seven days ago. And yeah, maybe that's a problem. But you know, for now, let's just uh, guard against any issues with different data types by converting each thing to a date. So we'll say um, date range equals start date to date dot dot end date dot to date. I think that will work and then I think we need to actually convert that to an array I'm doing a lot of stuff here really without knowing exactly what's happening so let me go over here and kick up a rails console and let's do seven dot days dot go dot to date dot dot date dot today and now let's say dot to a Undefined method to a, so I need to put this in parentheses here, and then we'll try it out again to a. So that's basically what we got, right? So let's look at what happens if I run my query. So page view, let's do page view count by date. I'm just sorry, sorry for the bouncing around. I know that might be obnoxious, so I'm trying to be careful about it. Failing a lot of the time, but trying. Okay, so 7.days.go date.today. So you can see that the date string we are getting here is different than uh, what we have here. So our keys aren't going to match. So what I want to look at is 2a.map and what we're going to do is say date and what I want to do is say date.strf time which is I think short for stringified time and what I want is percent %y so this is all documented elsewhere so I'll let you look this up for exactly what's going on here and I'm going to try to do this from memory and then percent %d and well that would be m right so it's year, month, day. So year, let's just try dash percent D. I don't think that's going to be right, especially if I don't close it off. Actually, no, that is right. Surprising. Okay, um, sometimes I remember things, sometimes I don't. Um, so that's why you have to be good at looking things up if you're a programmer. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this. Whoa, not that. I'm going to grab this. And go back over to my code and let's see where do I want to put this I'm gonna say date range 2a okay so since that's broken onto multiple lines here I'm gonna change this to a do and then we'll make an end there so then where hash with zeros equals that date range dot each do date hash with zeros dot date blah 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 Okay, so now what I'm going to do in each of these cases is say um, with zeros, sorry for the long pause there, was just trying to add a little drama, just kidding, um, start date, end date, results. So I'm going to copy both of these and let's check out what we got. So save that. Um, and then let's refresh and get an error with zeros. Um, I need an E because that's how I spelled it there. How do you spell zeros? I'm going to check. <laughs> First thing that pops up, zeros or zeros. It states that the plural of zeros is zeros. Um, I don't know. I like it without the E better for some reason, so I'm going to go with that. Um, also, I did define it like that, hash with, <laughs> it's like I couldn't decide when I was writing this. Okay, so hash with zeros, we have with zeros spelled the same everywhere now. Let's go try that out. Um, okay, so undefined method, where am I missing this? With zeros. Oh, it's because I need to make this a class method. I don't even know if that was a spelling problem. Probably was. Okay, so now we actually have our zeros in here. So you can see that we have several days here in the middle with no views. 
and then it spikes up to 12 as of today. And again, like if I had fixed my time zone prior to registering all this data, you would see some stuff on the 23rd, which is why I was saying that you probably need to do a migration um, if you have this running in production. On localhost, I don't care. I'll just reset the database, whatever, um, especially in the early stages when I'm just sorting this out. I haven't deployed this anywhere yet. But if you wanted that to account for the fact that we should have had like eight page views on the 23rd and then maybe even these over here are messed up, you would need to basically say migrate the data to reflect the time zone and the timestamps. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure exactly how you would do that. I would do a little quick Googling and that would probably be how I find the answer. Um, but at any rate, now this at least looks more reasonable. So I think that's basically it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to uh, add some colors here. Um, and then we may look at um, adding custom date ranges. And another thing is I had some comments suggesting we use something called Chart Kick, which I haven't actually used before. And it looks like it's a pretty simple, cool gem. So we may go ahead and um, add that. That could be interesting. That could also be a part four. I don't know. I'm trying not to drag the episodes out too long, but I don't want to break them up too much. So that's kind of something I'm working on getting better at. Also, I think I do need to do some studying on the time zone stuff. I was not really thinking that this was going to be that involved today. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We're just kind of working through the projects and dealing with whatever comes up as we encounter it. So... Um, if you like this type of thing, um, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. If you don't like it, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. Um, and uh, we'll try to get more stuff that's more helpful as we go along. And um, as always, if you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. But all of that said, I will talk to you in the next episode.